my neighbor's dogs won't stop barking, so if you hear them, ignore them. Welcome back to So You're Interested In, the show where I break down an artist's discography in order to give you, the viewer, the best possible jumping off point in order to get into their catalog. On this installment, let's get into the indie rock outfit Avlov. Forming in Newtown, Connecticut, Avlov takes the classic indie rock formula and doses it with their own unique brand of songwriting. Adding in flares of shoegaze, noise, and pop, this group knows how to spice up even the simplest of tunes. They are musical chameleons, shifting in color and tone in order to blend in best with the vibe that they're feeling. And that's not to say they're copycats, because their sound is very much their own. Anyway, I'm going to be recommending two albums and three individual tracks, so you can go check out Avlov for yourself. Let's get things started with the albums. The first Avlov record you should be checking out is their 2013 release, Am. It should be noted that Am came out before the Arctic Monkeys released their album Am, beating it by only a few months. And obviously this is going to sound nothing like the Arctic Monkeys, but that only begs the question, what should we expect from Am? How about a hard mix of indie rock, shoegaze, noise pop, and even a hint of emo? These thematic ideas are presented in a variety of ways, with the song New Punk showing strong notes of dense noise and passionate vocals. The driving bass helps chug the song along, making me reminiscent of Dinosaur Jr.'s music. The track Where's My Dini draws much more heavily from their shoegaze influences. Sometimes I can't tell if this is meant to be the heaviest indie rock song of all time or the latest shoegaze song of all time. The crushing guitars and percussion are nicely balanced out by this stringy, jangly guitar section that brings this cut back to earth. Not to mention this features the vocal stylings of Sadie Dupree of Speedy Ortiz fame only adding to this star-studded vocal performance. We eventually make our way to Really Bees, which is more or less just a straight up punk track. It's fun as hell with fantastic drum work and even better vocals. Steve Hartlett goes to town on this one and it only makes me wish that he had a hardcore project going on at some point as well. One last cut I'd like to touch on is Blue Baby. Personally, I think this is the best constructed song on the project. The downtrodden vocals are extended well past the mic as every instrument feels as though it is being buried by an overwhelming weight. Once the instrumental breaks free from its depressing shackles, we get this amazing amazing riff that ties the entire track together. Am is certainly of a specific time and place in music history, but that does not mean that this album cannot be enjoyed by a brand new generation of listeners. Next up, I really think you should listen to their 2021 record, Buds. With a much heavier emphasis on the indie rock sound, Buds is punchier and livelier than Am. Each tune on this thing is a blast, making the listener feel like they're enjoying the sun on a nice warm day. Kicking off this LP is the song Baby Shay, which enters through a blister of noise. The guitar riffs hit hard, and the drums hit even harder, while Hartlett sneakily lets his vocals wade beneath the current. It's more direct than many of the songs on this project, especially in comparison to a track like Land of Stevo. To be honest, I made this entire entire video because of how much I love this song. I made a friend listen to Land of Steve -O while prepping for this video, and their first reaction was to ask me if this was a Strokes song. He's not all that far off, as this cut does strikingly resemble a Strokes B-side or something like that. Between the undeniably enjoyable instrumental, screamable hook, and wicked guitar solo, Land of Steve -O will stay in your rotation for a while. Before moving to the individual tracks, let's take some time to talk about Cheer Up Chihiro. Just in hearing the bass alone, it'll be no secret that Avlov has a serious shoegaze past. The entire track is slightly awkward while still having some admirable and charming features too. Plus, how can you not enjoy the wonderful horn-filled send-off at the end of the track? Buds is a great look at this ever-evolving group who seemingly finds their niche wherever they see fit. That's all for the albums, but now, it's track time. The first Avlov track I think you should be checking out is Ah Ha Ha from their 2009 EP, Crazy Motorcycle Jump. This song can also be found on their Greatest Hits Volume 2 compilation, so all of you Spotify users out there, do not fret, it is on there. There aren't many blistering tracks in Avlov's discography, but this song in particular definitely scratches that itch. It's pretty simple in its construction, but what it lacks in frills, it completely makes up for in sheer power and energy. There's some conflicting punk and indie rock energies going on here 
here as well. So enjoy Ahaha down to the very last note. Another standout cut you should listen to is The Valley from their 2011 EP, What's So Great About the City. Right off the bat, we are treated to this gnarly guitar tone that cuts through the song like a rusty blade. The rhythm is impeccable, instantly becoming a headbanger of sorts. I also love Hartlett's vocal performance here, matching the overall vibe of the track to a T. The Valley is a short and sweet piece of music that I think any new listener will be able to enjoy. One last song I'd like to suggest is Baby Alligator from their 2018 LP, True. I'd like to make it known up front that you should still go listen to this entire project despite me only talking about Baby Alligator. Trust me, it is damn good and totally worth it. Their laid back slacker rock mentality shines the brightest on this song. In all honesty, this track just sounds lazy. But it's lazy in such a wonderful way, like when you finally have a day off for the first time in forever and sit down and just watch Simpsons reruns until your eyes bleed. No, just just me? Even in its most intense moments, there's still a feeling that everything will be okay as long as you hold on tight. Like I said, listen to all of True, but if you only have time for one track, make sure it's Baby Alligator. And that will wrap up my video on Avlov. Links to all of the albums and tracks discussed here will be located in the video description box below. Scroll down even further to leave a comment letting me know if you liked any of the albums or picks that I had here. You can also leave a comment with any artist that you'd like to see covered on this show. Just know, as always, there's a bit of a backlog built up, so if I don't get to it right away, it's nothing personal. I am working on it. Also, we are getting dangerously close to episode 100 of So You're Interested In, and I think that I'm going to have some cool news for you in the near future. Be sure to subscribe to be the first ones to know about about the exciting things happening with episode 100, along with the other shows that I have on this channel. We obviously have So You're Interested In, which should be coming out twice a week, along with a show called Stacks of Wax, where I go through my record collection A through Z to show off and flex some of the cool records that I own. And that's all that I got, aside from my usual reminder to go out and support your local record store if you were able to, along with the local artists in your area. And, well, until I see you next time, happy listening.